This is part 21 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss including and excluding properties from model binding using bind attribute. Please watch part 20 before proceeding with this video. In part 20, we discussed achieving exactly the same thing by passing a string array as a parameter to this update model function. Notice that here we have a string array with name property and this string array specifies an exclude list. By passing the string array to this update model function, we are telling the default ASP.NET MVC model binder to exclude name property from model binding. We have also discussed using another overloaded version of update model where we have specified an include list. So this string array here specifies an include list. And notice the properties ID, gender, city, date of birth. So by passing the string array to this update model function, we are telling the default ASP.NET MVC model binder to include only these properties in model binding. Instead of using string array, we can also use um, bind attribute to achieve exactly the same thing. Let's see how to do that. I'm going to make a few changes to this controller action method. The first change is I'm going to get rid of this ID parameter and then use employee object as a parameter. So this employee object is going to receive automatically the posted form values. And then I'm going to specify uh, you know, the bind attribute right here. And then notice that this bind attribute class has got two constructors. The second constructor has got some named parameters. And look at this. We can specify our include and exclude list. So notice that include is equal to string, exclude is equal to string, meaning you are properties has to be a comma separated list of string okay so I'm going to specify an include list so include equal to and then we can specify the properties that we want to be part of model binding so I want ID gender city and date of birth so let's copy that and specify that as our include list Okay, so now we are passing in employee object. We got rid of that ID parameter. So obviously this line will throw um, a compilation error because we don't have that ID parameter anymore. But we can very easily get the ID of the employee by using this employee object. So employee object has got ID property. So employee dot ID. And look at this. When we have, you know, we have told the default ASP.NET model binder to only include this properties in, uh, you know, model binding. So it's not going to bind name property. So from the posted form values, it will pick up only ID, gender, city, and date of birth, and then update, uh, you know, the properties of this employee object, but not the name property. Name property will be null. And then if we pass this employee object to the database, uh, you know, to the save employee method, it will be saved to database, and a name will become null. But that's not what we want. We want to retain the existing name of the employee. It's just that, you know, when somebody goes to edit view, you know, we don't want them to be actually changing the name of the um, employee there. Okay, uh, but we want to retain the existing name of the employee. Okay, so to do that, um, you know, this employee's property is going to return all the employees from the database out of which we are getting that single employee whom we are editing. And then I'm going to retrieve their name using name property. Okay, and then look at this since we are already passing the employee object here. You know, we cannot create, you know, there's no point in creating another instance of employee object here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to set the name property of that employee object, okay, to whatever is, is present in the database, okay? And then we can get rid of this update model function because, you know, this employee object will automatically be receiving the posted form value. So we don't have to call this anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that update model there. And then if model state is valid, we are passing that employee object to the save employee. And then we are redirecting the user to index action. All right. If there are any model state validation errors, we remain on the same view and get the opportunity to see those validation errors so that we can correct and submit the form once again. So with these changes, let's go ahead and run this and see if it's going to work as expected. So I go to the employee tab, edit action, and I'm going to edit the first employee. And let's click on save and see what's going to happen. Look at that. It says the name field is required. Why is that? 
that's because you know the default ASP.NET MVC model binder is only going to bind ID, gender, city, and date of birth from the posted form values. It's not going to update name property. So when it gets to this line, model state dot is valid, it's going to check, okay, I didn't bind name property to this object. Okay, but then if you look at the employee class within our business layer, we have got this employee class. If you look at this employee class, we have decorated this name property with the required attribute. And the default model binder did not bind uh, a value for that property. So so that's why it, it throws false, you know, it returns false. Model state dot is valid is going to return false. Okay, so how to get rid of this error? Uh, one way is to simply uh, get rid of this required attribute there. With that change, let's go ahead and run this and see if we get the same error. So let's navigate to employee controller edit action and we are editing employee with ID is equal to 1. Let's click save and see if it's going to get saved. So the save is now working. We are not getting any compilation errors. Let's edit, change some data. You know, let's change the gender to female. Let's change the city to London and let's save it. So the update is working as expected. Now let's actually fire up Fiddler and let's try to generate a post request. Okay, so it's asking me, you know, there's a new uh, version of Fiddler. Do I want to upgrade? Not now. Let's delete the existing request there. Let's generate a post request by clicking on the save button. So we have the, this is the post request. So I'm going to go onto the Composer tab, drag and drop this post request. Okay, and let's change the name as well. So I I'm going to change name from X Y Z to let's say A B C, gender from female to male, and let's change city from London to Chennai, and let's execute this. And let's see if the name is changed. We don't want the name to be changed. So let's actually go back. Let's you know refresh this index action. Look at that. Only gender city is changed. Name is still X Y Z. Okay. So we are able to specify our include list using bind attribute instead of passing a string array to update model function. Alternatively, we can also specify our exclude list. So instead of specifying your include list I can simply say exclude is equal to I want to exclude name property from model binding it's as simple as that so we can either include and exclude properties from model binding by passing string array to update model function or the second way is to actually use bind attribute and specify your include and exclude list on this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.